coming up in all angles. Crime plan. After crime plan. After crime plan. And still, concerns about Jamaica's murder rate. Crime is escalating every day. The crime has taken over the place, are we? What of the national consensus on crime? Can that help? And if so, how? And thank you so much for joining us for another edition of All Angles. I'm Dion Jacks Miller. So joining me in this segment of the program to talk about the national consensus on crime, what's happened since the signing, what's going to be happening. We have Everton Rattray, youth representative on the Crime Consensus Monitoring and Oversight Committee, and also with us the Reverend Newton Dixon, who is president of the Jamaica Council of Churches. Before we start talking to our guests, though, Javon Keyes has this over view. It's a bloody start for 2021. Just one month down and already 133 murders. That's 32 murders more than the same period in 2020. The latest data come as Insight Crime, a foundation capturing criminal data in the Caribbean and Latin America, found that for 2020, Jamaica had the highest rate of homicides in the region. With a total of 1,301 murders for 2020, the country's murder rate stands at almost 47 per 100,000 persons. Trinidad and Tobago was the closest Caribbean country to Jamaica, ranking fourth with 28.2 homicides per 100,000 persons. But Jamaica isn't new to topping murder rankings. In 2005, the country had the highest murder rate in the world, with 58 per 100,000 persons. The number of murders that year, 1,674. At that point, the highest since independence in 1962. That was until 2009, when 1,683 murders were committed. The primary links to criminal activities identified by successive studies, gangs, guns, and drugs. So what attempts have been made to tackle the issue over the years? Plenty. Here are just a few. Under the leadership of Prime Minister P.J. Patterson, the Crime Management Unit CMU, then led by Renito Adams, was created in 2000. And while the squad never lasted very long, it developed an infamous reputation for using brute force. The administration also explored resumption of the death penalty, last used in Jamaica in 1988. But a constitutional amendment to try to make it easier to use capital punishment has not resulted in the resumption of hanging. By 2002, the government put forward what was dubbed the New Crime Plan. It proposed community policing initiatives, education for the security forces on citizens' rights, and stronger collaboration between the Jamaica Constabulary Force and the Jamaica Defense Force. Then came Operation Kingfish, aimed at clamping down on illicit gang activity. The national security policy was laid on the table during Portia Simpson Miller's first stint as Prime Minister in 2007. When Bruce Golding took office later that year, his administration focused on strengthening the capacity of security forces with more than $400 million for vehicles and equipment. Legislative improvement was also a part of the Golding strategy. In the first year alone, six bills were brought to the lower house governing the use of DNA evidence, witness protection, and court operations. In Mrs. Simpson Miller's second tenure, a revamped national security policy was rolled out. There was also the National Crime Prevention and Community Safety Strategy and the Unite for Change initiative. Her administration merged the major organized crime and anti-corruption task force with the anti-corruption branch of the Jamaica Constabulary Force in 2014. From that, the major organized crime and anti-corruption agency MOCA was born with the aim to pursue criminal kingpins and to stamp out corruption. 2016 saw the dawn of a new administration with Andrew Holness at the helm and the Five Pillar Strategy for Crime Prevention and Citizen Security. Then came the Zones of Special Operations Zoso Act of 2017, a strategy which not only focuses on law enforcement but also community redevelopment. Then from Zoso's to SOE's. 
state of public emergency creates a scheme of operations for the police and military to work together. The authorized personnel are named members of the JDF, members of the JCF, and they name some others. They can act, the JDF and the JCF can act together to use powers of policing together. It gives the framework for that kind of operation. But motion after motion to extend the measure made it seem as if it was the key crime-fighting strategy. The administration was chided for what many described as the lack of a crime plan. One point you said there is a crime plan. And take your word for it that there is a crime plan that you don't disclose to, disclose to us. If it is so, it is not working. Because the numbers are as they are. They are getting worse. Over the years, citizens and the private sector have also gotten involved in crime fighting with community watch groups and Crime Stop. On May 25, 2005, businesses in the capital closed as business and civic leaders met in Emancipation Park. The private sector organization of Jamaica emerged with the Emancipation Park Declaration, demanding that politicians sever ties with criminals and implement better crime-fighting measures, while calling for more support from corporate Jamaica. Fifteen years later, and days before the 2020 general election, the most recent effort at multi-stakeholder collaboration, the National Consensus on Crime, was signed. It brings together the political directorate, civil society, and the private sector to make legislative and operational changes to reduce crime. Javon Keyes, For All Angles. Thank you so much for that, Javon. Okay, and I should say also joining us on Zoom, we have Helene Davis White, president of the Jamaica Confederation of Trade Unions, as well as Lloyd Distant, who chairs the Crime Consensus Monitoring and Oversight Committee. So thank you so much to all our guests in studio and on Zoom. Reverend Dixon, I have to start with you. Listening to Javon go through that list of mm plans and policies and efforts and that's just a sample i mean they're only we didn't even put in there you know what, what do you think looking at that i think we've come to realize that the problem with crime is that it will take a multi-generational approach to fix it i'm saying that to say that we are not going to find any quick fix anytime soon I was, while we were off here, myself and my brother Ratri were talking about the fact that if I get to live another 40 years, we must, I'm, I would like to see that at the end of that 40 years, we are not killing 1,000 persons per year as we have, as we have done for the last 40 years. So, so I, I'm, I'm going to take the, the, the pragmatic and probably optimistic approach, Dion, by saying, we really have to dig in, keep our heads down, focus on the problem, and continue fighting at it. Because Jamaica's, Jamaica's entire existence is at stake. All right, hold that thought for me. I'm going to come back. Everton Ratcher for you when, you when you look at all of that. It shows the sad reality that we are living in. Um, Does you it know, show that we've tried everything? It, I wouldn't necessarily say we have tried everything. I, I think sometimes the approach must be assessed and to see what exactly are the gaps within those approaches sometimes. So, um, I mean, crime fighting is no small monster to fight. You know, it's, it's probably one of the biggest monsters this country has seen in the, in the last 40 to 50 years, if you want to look at it that, in that way. So, absolutely. I, I wouldn't say we have tried everything, um, but I definitely think there, there's a lot more that can be done, um, in particular. Um, I don't want to go too much into it, but I so do. So you don't, you don't feel hopeless watching that? You I, don't feel like, what else what to do? I, you know, when I look at it, I, I look at the, the, the difficulty with the system on a whole. You know, there's a direct link between corruption and governance in, in Jamaica, and, and we can't ignore the reality of that. You know, and, and, and part of fighting that is also looking at how we are actually addressing the problems. Or for example, are we prosecuting persons who are in authority who are actually involved in corruptions or any means of that nature? So the, there's a lot of things that we need to look at, and, and sometimes the, the difficulty comes from the fact that um, we are not actually doing some of the actual work that needs to be done in terms of legislation and actually um, prosecution. But you don't feel hopeless? No, I don't feel hopeless as a Jamaican in living here. 
Lord, this time, let me bring you in and ask you if you feel hopeless because, I don't know, especially when I said to people, you remember the Emancipation Park Declaration? Most people don't. You know, a lot of my lo younger colleagues weren't around at the time. I would say, yeah, Kingston locked down and been vigil in Emancipation Park and we came out with this Emancipation Park Declaration that was supposed to be a game changer, except it clearly wasn't. So, so Mr. Distant, it, it doesn't feel to you sometimes like we're running in place. No, absolutely not. Um, Dion, the, the, I think what I'll point to, and when, when you, when as, as you're going through the list, I was reminded of a conversation with the commissioner where he spoke about the, you know, notwithstanding the different political parties being in power, notwithstanding the uh, different commissioners and ministers who have all, with the best of intention, wanting to, wanted to reduce um, crime. What we have not had is everybody coming together. So even the emancipation, in, the, in, in that emancipation declaration, again, don't recall all the details of it, but I'm pretty sure in the conversations we have had, it did not include the government agreeing, the opposition agreeing, the private sector, the treat unions, the youth groups, everyone is here, the churches, everybody coming together. Uh, and a significant difference here is you know, as we built this consensus, we're very much focused on ridding ourselves of the individual views of what ought or ought not to be done and coming to a collective agreement on all the things that need to be done. Again, it's not just about the work of the JCF and fighting crime. Um, our, the view that we have come to is that what is required is something that's way more comprehensive. We need legislation in place and some legislation's changed. We All need right. a justice system that's right for us. Right. Hold, hold I can that, continue. Hold, that, pause hold, there, hold that thought for me, I'm, Mr. Distant. Hold, hold the thought for me. Let me just go to our first break. We'll come back. We'll bring in Helene Davis-White. We'll continue to talk. And, of course, we're going to be looking at this national consensus, what's involved and what you can expect from that. Remember our hashtag. It's TVJ All Angles. We're back in a moment. <laughs> 